Hi, I'm Linda Mao, and welcome to Art This Week Bios Conduit Gallery. This is the full interview we did with former Conduit Gallery assistant Marty Walker and Nancy Whitenack. Here we speak with Marty and Nancy about what it was like to run Conduit Gallery in the late 1990s. Marty was the Conduit Gallery assistant at the Main Street Space from 1996 to 1999. She was also there when they opened the Conduit Annex. Now for the full interview with Marty and Nancy. Marty, I know you were a student at UT, uh, UNT in uh, the 90s. Um, what were kind of your memories of the art scene, both in Denton while you were in school, but in Dallas as well as in Deep Ellum? Um, well, I would say the majority of what was going on in Dallas seemed to be in, in Deep Ellum. Um, and in, in, in Denton, it seemed uh, incredibly, it was an incredibly charged time. Um, Vernon Fisher had begun teaching a hybrid forms class, and that really um, kicked off uh, just almost a whole new aesthetic, a new way of thinking. Uh, that I think was liberating for anybody that was an interested in art outside of painting or sculpture. So, um, <clears throat> so there was a lot of uh, energy around that and the people that seemed to be really making a lot of, you know, work in that arena um, sort of gravitated towards being in Good Bad Art Collective and then at the time. So I would say that most of the energy, yeah, uh, Deep Ellum, uh, there, there weren't a whole lot of galleries. I mean, it seems like there were like maybe, were at, at contemporary galleries anyway. I think there were only like two, no. There were like, seriously, four like five, four maybe. or five. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, 500X was going on. Has, and, um, David Quadrini and Angstrom Gallery had just opened. And uh, the annex uh, came along um, I, I, a couple years after I'd been there. So how did you um, first meet Nancy? Oh my God. <laughs> I turned her down several times for, a, she wanted me to be a gallery assistant. And um, this was when I was living up in Denton. <laughs> I don't remember that, but. <laughs> well, I was, I was a painter. I was studying painting, and I really didn't have any, any, any knowledge of the business of art. And um, to me, as somebody who was like still in grad school or was just finishing up, it was super intimidating. And so I said no just because I was I was mostly intimidated um, and then she finally asked me why do you keep turning me down you know what what is what's your block with this and I, I just said you know I just am really intimidated by the caliber of clientele that that you know you probably have and in my mind I was thinking like the Brit the British art collectors walking around with a pipe and ooh, isn't this lovely? And you know, that kind of amped up uh, you were not vision in my head. For the collectors who come in that uh, were so clueless about art at all and that really disgusted you. You weren't ready for them. Actually, I, I was <laughs> It was a flip side moment. I, it was, I couldn't believe, I was just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was really um, surprised by that. But even though, uh, but that was my job. You know, when I came to work with her, that was our job was uh, engaging people, talking about the work, um, at a level where they were. And that was something I really liked uh, working with Nancy um, because she's always created this very uh, warm and welcoming environment anywhere she's been. 
and um, I have a lot of ad admiration for that. She's um, always been a real sharp, uh, straight shooter, you know. So you could say sharp shooter if you want to, or or, or that you know, <laughs> depends on. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Going um, to the Main Street Gallery space, um, what were some of your favorite memories from that location and uh, some of the exhibitions that were held there that really kind of stood out in your mind? Well, I, just the, um, I, th I like the proportions of the space. Uh, it was a little bit smaller than mm -hmm. this gallery. Um, Graham Green, I believe, uh, helped Nancy Help design the space. Design the yeah. space. And so there were these big round columns and, you know, it was just a really interesting building. And, and um, so uh, that space really sort of stood out to me architecturally. And um, as far as, you know, it's so weird. I mean, it's like so long ago. But the, the show that really stands out to me um, was, was, uh, a, sh a show by Patrick Fallhaber. Dance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, really tiny, hyper photorealistic, just little jewels hanging on the wall. And I just, I just thought they were, and, and, and I still think they're just incredible paintings. Moving into kind of the origins of the annex, um, what, what was your kind of memory of how that idea came along and what was your involvement in the creation of the Annex? Um, <laughs> well, I think we were both um, sort of wanting to shake things up a little bit and um, Nancy asked me, um, you know, if, if, if I could do anything at the gallery, what, what would I want to do? And I said, well, I think, gosh, I'd really like to, I'd like to curate a show or something. And I don't know how we sort of, you may remember this better than I do. I don't really. You also went to clean house. Oh, well, yeah, we had a real storage problem. <laughs> And I think that those things came together, and uh, so we walked around um, the, the the storage unit that she had was just down the hallway from from the gallery, and um, so that it didn't connect uh, in, for, to the interior. Yeah. Um, so so I I proposed to her that we return all of the work. And, and, and clean out this this space, which was, I think, like 12 feet by four or five feet. It was kind of an L shape, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she sat with it for a, a bit, and and then, you know, wanted, she saw it as well. And and I think what what was really exciting to me is it was a way to bring in um, works by emerging artists and be able to show them alongside the major shows. And so they would get exposure from our existing, to, our, to our existing clients. Um, and, and there wasn't any like major, I mean, there wasn't any major commitment as far as like real estate. There was something really, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there was something really low, low, no, low risk as far as like this, this mm -hmm. tiny space that's gonna show either installation works or, or just small works. And, um, and it really, it was very freeing. Um, it was very liberating to yeah. get rid of we couldn't get in the storeroom to begin with. <laughs> it, had, it was so packed. It was so packed it was to the ceiling, useless yeah. Yeah. to begin with, yes. So we, um, we packed up everything in there and um, 
loaded it in a U-Haul and drove across the country and, and returned <laughs> all of this work to uh, artists, mainly in Illinois, and I think we ended up in, in Boston. Uh, By way of um, Buffalo. Buffalo, and then mm -hmm. Boston, and then uh, we dropped off the truck and went up to Maine for lobster, I think, and flew back to <laughs> Dallas. But it was an awesome road trip, and, um, and, uh, and then when we came back, it was time to start, um, you know, figuring out what we were going to show and, and uh, start actually getting the walls ready and lights ready and that sort of thing. We had to actually tear out um, a section of uh, plywood that had been a sort of a deck. Um, so we had to tear out stuff as well. Yeah. We had some d demolition to do. So having, uh, uh, I know the first show was Good Bad Art Collective, um, and I know you'd mentioned that earlier that they were um, a group out of UNT, so can you speak to a little bit of your relationship with them and how they kind of uh, came into being, I guess, the inaugural exhibition or installation for the Annex space? Well, um, I, I couldn't think of, <clears throat> anyone else and I think it was mainly because the space was so tiny I mean it was so small and so here you like bring in this force of like 15 to 20 people um, that I felt could really max out the space and so it made sense to invite them uh, to, to do an installation for the inaugural show and um, you know, I, I just talked to them and told them the space that we had created, they, you know, that we wanted them to do the inaugural exhibition. And I think on their end, they were really grappling with um, how are we going to, because they, their whole premise was one, you know, you snooze, you lose, one night only event, you know, event driven exhibitions. And uh, so they had to compromise a little bit on that, but um, as far as you know, the installation and the collective as a whole, um, I, I, I have to say, to date, it is still one of my favorite exhibitions. <laughs> what, what, what was your reaction when you heard that Nancy was going to move uh, her space here to the design district? And um, what were your thoughts on that? I thought it was awesome. I thought it was, I thought it was a really bold move. Uh, it, made, it made total sense. Um, you know, and on, on Main Street, uh, the gallery was, was located on the second floor, which <clears throat> I can't think of anybody else that had that sort of, you know, not in Dallas. Not in Dallas, no. right. So, Not I mean, it, it, it was tough. There, there, were, there would be some quiet times, definitely. You know, not, not a whole lot of foot traffic, which in some cases can be fantastic if it's not the right kind of foot traffic. Um, but, but uh, you know, word of mouth is pretty much how you've always operated it, it anyway. It was definitely destination. You had to be going there. Yes. Particularly. Mm -hmm. uh, Good but, and bad. <laughs> but this, you know, uh, this area, it just seemed, it just seemed um, perfect, actually. And uh, so I was, I was really excited for Nancy. I was working in, I was working in technology then. <laughs> so then I know uh, you, close after, opened your own gallery. And nearby here, um, kind of what were the, some things, some key point takeaways that you had from Nancy and working with her um, and then kind of continuing your art career? Well, you know, I've always been competitive with Nancy that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, how long had you been down? See, I opened in 2006, so you had been we down opened, here. We um, opened 2003? No. 2002. Yeah. 
2002. Yeah. So um, I had taken a, a really long hiatus, probably uh, six, eight years off from all things art. And, uh, and then I got to the point where I had to take uh, some time off of all things corporate. And so I came back back to the art world and um, and I just, you know, um, ended up, uh, I always knew that if, if I were to open a gallery, it would definitely be somewhere, somewhere in this area. So lastly, what would be one thing you could tell us about Nancy that we may not know? <laughs> so. Don't go there. <laughs> See, you might want to put new, a new a new tape card or yeah <laughs> from what year <laughs> you were afraid of that How question much huh do you want to know yeah this is a tough one because if i told you things they're hilarious the huh <laughs> no you don't want them on tape but um <clears throat> I lasted, let's see, with my gallery, I lasted <clears throat> eight years. And to go on, on 30 years, I just, I can barely stand, <clears throat> you know, physically stand upright, like visualizing myself in, you know, 30 years with a gallery. And I think it's absolutely incredible that um, there are individuals who have this vision and longevity and commitment, huge commitment um, to not only artists, but their patrons and, and the community. And I think that um, Nancy's been hugely important in the Dallas uh, art community. <laughs> we want to thank Marty and Nancy for speaking with us. You can find more information on the gallery at conduitgallery.com. Watch for other episodes about Conduit Gallery over the next few weeks. That's it for Art This Week Bios. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar